Hi folks, welcome to this video on supplements. So this is another part of the nutrition aspects of the A-level course. We're going to look at four supplements, the four supplements that are uh, quoted and cited by the exam board, and they are creatine, caffeine, bicarbonate, and nitrates. And I've just put a very quick brief description of what each thing is and why each person takes it. We're going to look at each one individually, so don't worry about that. Creatine is used to increase your phosphocreatine stores. So if you've already done stuff on the ATP PC system, you'll know what I'm talking about. If you haven't, don't panic. We'll go through what we need to know. We're also going to look at caffeine, which is probably one of the, the most common of these four supplements, one that you've probably already consumed today. Um, and that is a stimulant, and it heightens your central nervous system. So we're going to look at that. We're also going to look at bicarbonate, which is an alkali. And if you're thinking back to school, what did acids and alkalis do to each other? They neutralized each other. So that might be a clue as to the benefit of this type of supplement. And also we're going to look at nitrates. And these nitrates dilate your blood vessels. They open up your blood vessels. So we're going to go through each one at a time now, look at why you take it, and also some of the side effects. So creatine then, creatine powder, creatine tablets, sometimes called uh, creatine monohydrate. This is, you know, quite a big supplement. A lot of people take it these days. For those who are unfamiliar with the energy systems, you might be doing it in the second year of your course or later on in your course. Creatine supplementation boosts the amount of a substance called phosphocreatine in your body and in your muscles. And phosphocreatine is an energy source. So as we've just said, creatine is stored as phosphocreatine in the muscles. And phosphocreatine is an energy source that we use when we're working maximally or anaerobically, i.e. flat out, for up to 10 seconds. So Usain Bolt, as a 100 meter sprinter, will use phosphocreatine as the energy source to last for that 100 meter sprint. But equally, if I'm in the gym doing weights and I'm doing sets of 10 or 8 reps or 6 reps or something like that, it will take around about 10 seconds to do those uh, sets. So I'm working max of those reps, sorry. So I'm working maximally for up to 10 seconds. If I consume more creatine, I can lengthen my phosphocreatine stores. I can increase them. Therefore, I can work maximally for slightly longer. So the benefits of this energy system are that I, if, if I take creatine powder, sorry, I'm going to increase this energy source, this, these PC stores in my muscles. That means I can increase the duration of maximal activity, maybe by adding two seconds onto that 10. So this system will now last 12 seconds. Now, you might be thinking, oh, well, big whoop, what's two seconds? And you're right, you know, as a one off, two seconds is nothing. But if each time I'm doing a set of eight reps, you know, I'm getting exhausted at 10 seconds because I've run out of PC. If I've got 12 seconds worth of PC and it allows me to get an extra two, one or two reps out every set, well, if that's happening every session for four to six months, that's a significant amount of extra weight I've shifted in that time period. Therefore, I'm going to be more powerful. I'm going to be more explosive. I'm going to be stronger. So it does increase your maximal explosive strength. It does make you stronger. It does make you more powerful using creatine powder. So in summary, phosphocreatine is an energy source that you only use when you're working maximally for up to 10 seconds. So by taking creatine powder, I am increasing the PC stores. I can maybe add two seconds onto this energy system, which over you know many reps and many sets and many training sessions is going to ultimately increase my strength levels. So the side effects then, it's all not fantastic. Um, when we do take creatine, creatine is stored with water. Phosphocreatine is stored with water. So it does increase our water retention. And as a result, we gain weight. I've taken creatine before and I've put on three kilos in two days. And that's not three kilos of muscle mass, that's three kilos of additional water. Now, if you are a sprinter or a long jumper or something like that, that's three kilos extra weight you've got to shift. So it is going to have an impact on your performance. You're also, with this extra water in your muscles, going to suffer from a little bit of cramp in the uh, big muscle groups in particular. So cramps is an issue. And, you know, that should say unknown. I don't know why it says unknown. But anyway, the long-term side effects are unknown. The reality is no one's really been taking creatine for long enough for us to know about any long-term side effects. We presume there will be some liver and kidney damage. Why? Well, your liver and your kidneys are your, they, you know, they're the organs that sort things out. They're the things that have been absorbed into your system and digested. Your liver and your kidneys sort out what is a keeper and what you get rid of. 
So any time you're consuming more of a substance, that makes more work for the liver and kidneys. So ultimately, probably liver and kidney damage is going to be a long-term effect for creatine. So onto caffeine then, one that we all consume fairly regularly, I would have thought. Here's the amount of caffeine in typical substances that we consume, many drinks. Um, so you can see, you know, the energy drinks, they're the big boom industry recently. Yeah, the 80 milligrams of caffeine, double what you get in a can of Coke. So, um, you know, almost, you know, almost four times the amount in espresso. And we always think espresso, you know, is the caffeine king. So these energy drinks, yeah, they are good, but, you know, make sure you drink them in moderation. Don't go too overboard. So why would people be interested in consuming higher levels of caffeine? Well, as we said right at the start, you know, it's about the central nervous system and caffeine is going to increase your nervous stimulation, i.e. going to speed up your reaction times. You're going to be able to react and respond quicker. You're also going to have better focus and concentration because you've got reduced fatigue. You're not as tired anymore. That's why we always take caffeine, don't we, when we're feeling tired. But something you might not know about caffeine. When you consume caffeine, you you increase the breakdown of fat in your body. So you metabolize more fat. You break down more fat. That leads to something called glycogen sparing. Now, if you think about it, you, you burn when you're working aerobically a combination of carbohydrates and fats, maybe 60% carbs, 40% fats at a given moment in time. If I consume caffeine, that's going to maybe equal out to 50-50. At any given moment in time, I'm burning 50% carbs, 50% fats. That means I am saving carbs, i.e. glycogen, for later on. I am sparing them for later on. So if I can save more carbohydrates, more glycogen for later on, I can increase my endurance performance. I can effectively run longer, last longer. I'm burning fat, more fats early on during exercise. So it's quite a good supplement to take if you are an endurance runner. Well, the side effects then, sorry, I've missed side effects off the top there, but you know, should have come in there. Anyway, the side effects written in red. It's a diuretic. Diuretics make you Pee out more water. So alcohol is another diuretic. That's why when you go and have a few drinks, you end up peeing out loads. And hence why you get hung over the next morning, because you pee out more fluid. You're in a state of dehydration. Similarly with caffeine, drinking enough caffeine has a diuretic effect. You're going to urinate more. And as a result, you're going to see more dehydrated people. Okay. You're also going to get insomnia. Remember, it's aimed to reduce fatigue, but in doing so, it can disturb your natural sleep pattern, keep you awake. And you also, I don't know if you've ever tried giving up chocolate or giving up coffee or giving up the fizzy drinks and things like that, you're going to get withdrawal. You get shakes, headaches. You know, some people report heart palpitations who consume a hell of a lot of uh, caffeine. So it's not all great. I mean, it is legal. Um, creatine is totally legal to use. These are all legal supplements we're talking about here, but they do have their side effects. Right, sodium bicarbonate then, or just known as bicarbonate. Um, this is something that you can go buy from any supermarket. It's, it's baking soda. It's found in bread. It's found in toothpaste. It's found in cleaning products, things like that. But you can go buy it from health food shops, sodium bicarbonate. Right, so what does it do? Why would people supplement their diet with it? So as we mentioned right at the start, bicarbonate and sodium bicarbonate is an alkali. So it's an alkalized substance. So if we ingest it, it's a white powder like that. We mix it in with water and we drink it, we consume it. What it's going to do is it's going to increase the alkalinity of the blood. It's going to make your blood slightly more alkaline. Your blood is typically neutral, pH 7. What we're doing is making a slight increase in the pH. We're making it slightly more alkaline. Why? Well, one of the substances that stops us from performing when we're working hard is the buildup of lactic acid, that burning sore pain in your muscles when you're working out you know typically anyone who's done a 400 meters or something like that when you get that real burning pain get the awful taste in your mouth that's the buildup of lactic acid and as you probably remember from uh, high school secondary school uh, science when an acid and an alkali meet they neutralize each other they cancel each other out so what we're saying is your muscles are going to be producing this lactic acid whoops this lactic acid that is burning causing a burning sensation in your muscles if our blood is already alkali, we can neutralize, i.e. remove or buffer more of this lactic acid as it's building up. So as a result, we can increase the intensity and the duration of our training. We can work for harder and longer because we can get rid of more of this lactic acid. So it's a real good strategy. If you are a performer, 
where in your event you naturally have to produce high levels of lactic acid you work hard for long periods of time and you get that burning sensation in your muscles so what are the side effects then it sounds pretty good doesn't it so far well there are a few nothing major but you, why do we put uh, sodium bicarbonate in bread and things like that it allows products to rise a little bit it creates air bubbles and air pockets why is it in your toothpaste because it creates air pockets that allow you to you know push these bits of food out from that's stuck in between your teeth well the thing is when you put that uh, sodium bicarbonate in your stomach it's going to have the same effect in your stomach it's going to bubble it's going to froth up and that's going to lead to what we call gastrointestinal distress you know a bit of vomiting a bit of bloating nausea happens there and i've got to be honest i've tried this as well you know i've tried creating i've tried this it's not the best tasting substance in the world so even just getting it down can be a bit of a struggle in itself so there are you know nothing major but there are a few side effects to the use of bicarbonate and finally the nitrates this is you know an example of a nitrate based supplement but nitrates you consume nitrates if you eat root vegetables things like beetroot um, but what happens to nitrate when it's in your body when it gets converted or it's stored in your body as nitric oxide or ni uh, yeah nitric oxide sorry now like i said you can get it from root vegetables but we do have supplements now no explode is probably the uh, most common ones nitric oxide explode just as like a little marketing gimmick but what does nitric oxide do when it's in the body when it vasodilates your blood vessels it opens them up that's going to increase the blood flow to the working muscles so you're going to get more oxygen going to the working muscles as a result you can work harder more oxygen means more energy production it means quicker recoveries you know so getting more oxygen to these muscles is massive as a result you're going to delay fatigue so it's a really, really good substance to take on board any form of nitrate. Like I said, if you're not into these supplements, you can get them naturally by consuming um, high amounts of root vegetables. Beetroot is one of the big ones. They talk a lot about beetroot juice and putting beetroot juice in various supplements and things like that and smoothies because of this nitrate-based uh, benefit, this increased oxygen delivery to the muscles, which benefits the tissue. The side effects then well because of this increased oxygen delivery here there and everywhere some people report dizziness and lightheadedness they get a little bit giddy because of this increased oxygen delivery is also going to get to the muscles as well however i would say it's quite a new idea of supplementation the long-term effects are unclear some people are saying there is a possible carcinogenic effect carcinogens are things that cause different types of cancers however what i would say is this what isn't carcinogenic these days you know, if you consume too much of anything, there is a possible carcinogenic effect. So, you know, if you eat too much red meat or processed meat, that's a carcinogenic effect. And too much alcohol, that's a carcinogenic effect. So there's, you know, a lot of things are linked to carcinogens, etc., etc. So, you know, take that with an air of caution, but it is mentioned in the syllabus. It's going to be worth the mark on the mark screen. So the other four key supplements, all of them are legal. Uh, you can take these without any sanctions or filling any drug tests and things like that. So these are some of the supplements that are used to boost and supplement athletes' diets. Hope you found this video useful, folks.